Hey everybody, how are you doing today? So today I wanted to talk about five steps to end self-sabotage. So I'm going to give you my five-step process that I use and that I teach my clients to get this hair out of my face. (laughs) Um, There we go. To end self-sabotage in their life and in their business. And this process is going to really help you navigate this because self-sabotage is something that we don't always realize that's occurring. Sometimes we notice that we're not taking action, but we don't really correlate it with self-sabotage. So let me start by telling you what self-sabotage is in case you are not really sure. So according to Healthline, self-sabotage refers to behaviors or thought patterns that hold you back and prevent you from doing what you want to do. So thought thought patterns or behaviors that hold you back and prevent you from doing what you want to do. Now, what I really want to focus on in that definition is the fact that it says behaviors. Now, behaviors, another word for that would be action. And where does your action really come from? Your action is going to come from your beliefs. Now, beliefs are something that are really stored in the subconscious mind they aren't something that we consciously choose all of the time most of the time they're ingrained in us and they're actually programmed from ages zero to seven i know if you are in the personal development and mindset world you've probably heard that a lot but that is when your brain is programmed and that's when your subconscious mind forms all of these habits and belief patterns and those are going to cause the actions that you take so we really want to get to the root cause of this so that way we can actually create a sustainable transformation and that's what i like to teach my clients is sustainable transformation right we don't want Well, sometimes we do want a quick fix, like just give me the quick ways, the nitty gritty ways, so that way I don't have to go through all of this gunk myself. But in reality, we really need something that's going to last, right? Think about it when you're doing a diet. If you're doing a diet, that's typically something that you're like, oh, I've got a wedding to go to in two months, so I wanna lose some weight or something like that, and you're not going to keep doing that diet after that, it's t- it's typically not sustainable. And that's what ends up happening a lot in the personal development world and in the professional growth world is that people start doing really well on one activity and they let it phase out and that's where they're not able to sustain their energy or they're not able to sustain their growth or they don't get the impact or the income or the freedom that they desire right because it's all due to those things so it's really common and sometimes we don't even notice it now ways that you can notice it and this is a really overt example where it's you have a goal to get in shape. And so you tell yourself you're going to take a daily walk. And then every time it comes to take a walk, you're like, "Uh, well, I really have these dishes to do. Or, oh, I'm too busy with work. I can't really walk right now. Or, oh, I'm feeling a little full from what I just ate. Or I'm too tired. You know, you start coming up with excuses. And even though you know in order to really become healthier, you need to be moving more. And walking is the easiest way for you to transition into a healthier lifestyle you are making excuses now so and that's what self-sabotage in your life can look like right now self-sabotage in your business and this is a little more of an an ex excuse me a covert example is that you want to have a successful service-based business but you keep telling yourself that no one wants to pay you for your services Now, you can be telling yourself, I don't know enough. Who am I to teach people? My business is going to fail. No one's going to want to buy this coaching package, this program, this course, whatever the case may be. Now, 
those are all self-sabotage and that's self-sabotage showing up in well you want to have a successful business but instead of having a mindset that aligns with your successful business you're staying in a mindset that's going to set your business up for failure and then that's really going to just be a domino effect so it's really in the mindset there that we have to change the belief the belief behind what you and your business can do that's what's really going to change the results and the outcomes of what you're doing is the mindset and the energy that you go into something with so if you are able to notice when you're self-sabotaging because we're all human right it's going to happen it's about identifying it first that would be what we're going to have is the first step is really identifying when you notice a self-sabotaging belief is coming up and again it's just any time that you're not taking action on something that you want to take action on whether it's in your life or whether it is in your business yeah you feel me you feel me i'm so glad this is resonating now, once you're able to identify the self-sabotaging belief and what's stopping you from taking action, that's when you're really able to start taking control and really examining it and looking into it and seeing why you have this self-sabotaging belief anyway. And when you can get, when you can identify it, you can then get to the root cause of it. You can look at where in your life did this belief come from did a certain experience when you were younger typically from zero to seven right going back to that subconscious programming but when in your life did something happen that made you create a belief that was self-sabotaging and once it's identified and once it's understood where it's come from and you've gotten to the root cause then you can choose to see it differently now we create beliefs based off of our perception of where we're at when the moment occurs when the experience happens now when we are six years old for example we're gonna have a completely different mindset than we would now as an adult right so our perception and the way we created an, a belief when we were six is probably not going to be a belief that's going to support us in our adult life specifically when we want professional success personal well-being and we want to have abundance in our life in all forms we really need to create new belief structures that are going to support this and one way to really notice if you're having these self-sabotaging beliefs if you're not yet able to identify them is look at what's happening in your life are you seeing certain experiences happen on repeat almost it could be you go to different jobs and you have the same type of boss who's always micromanaging you or it could be you keep meeting these friends and every time you meet a new friend it just feels like they're taking advantage of you something like that or you get into a, a, a romantic relationship and you keep seeming to attract the same kind of man over and over again. It's not the same and it's not aligned with the goals that you want to have. So why does this keep happening? It's because you have a belief in your head that's running this over again. I like to explain that your mind is really one big supercomputer, right? So these beliefs are basically like when you download a program on your computer, or you install it on your phone, you are installing an application in the operating system your operating system is your mind and your operating system is really just going off of what you're feeding it and you're feeding your mind with all of these beliefs but just because you decided to believe something one time doesn't mean that you have to continue to hold on to that belief there's actually probably if you examine it a better way for you to change your perspective on that belief or just to to tell a new story on that belief so that way it's aligning with the lifestyle you're trying to create it's aligning with the business that you're trying to create it's aligning with the success that you want to see with the abundance you're looking for you get what i'm saying self-sabotage is always going to try and keep you small and that's really the brain's job but it's also your job to decide how your brain functions because you control the supercomputer the supercomputer computer doesn't control you and you get to program it once you're old enough that's the where the magic comes from you get to decide how you want to program your mind and thus your life and that's when you can make changes so 
Now, it's like I was saying is it's ultimately a deep rooted belief that's going to cause the self-sabotaging behavior. And that's all always going to be stored in your subconscious mind. And it's really going to be that there's something underlying within that self-sabotaging belief, a feeling of lack, a feeling of unworthiness, a feeling of not being supported, a fear of being seen, heard, or understood. That's really typically going to be the root cause of these limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs show up in your life as self-sabotaging behaviors. Now, the next time you notice a self-sabotaging action, belief, behavior coming up in your life, what I want you to do, and is if, if you have a journal, write this down because I really want you to journal through this. This is going to be one of the most effective ways for you to be able to get to the root of your self-sabotaging belief, to be able to realize all of the stories that you're telling yourself, and then to really rewire in a new story. Hey, Valerie, long time no see. Always so amazing to see your beautiful face and feel your amazing energy. Sending you love and light, girl. Sending you love and light. So in your journal, I want you to ask yourself when you notice a self-sabotaging belief, action, behavior coming up, what belief is stopping me from taking action? I'll repeat that. What belief is stopping me from taking action? Now, I want you to realize that consciously you may not be aware of what that belief is. And I want you to let go of control for a minute. Ego is going to let go of the reins. I know it doesn't like to do that, but what we're going to do is we are going to trust the universe that we are fully supported and that the answer is going to come to us. And now the beautiful thing about journaling is I know that we see it in the personal development world all the time, but that truly, truly should not take away from any of the impact that journaling provides. Because what happens when you journal is that you are able to communicate consciously with your subconscious mind. Now, why that happens is you are consciously asking your mind a question. And then when you allow yourself, and I truly believe that writing is the best way because it's your mind, body, soul, spirit experience, right? You're able to communicate and align on all these levels. But when you ask yourself, a question like what belief is stopping me from taking action knowing that on a conscious level you don't have the answer when you write it out and then just allow yourself to non-judgmentally write whatever comes up to you it's in that process of writing and it it might be a little tense at first if you're not familiar with doing this or if it's new to you but just remember when you learn to ride a bike were you just like going two miles the second you learned no it was a little uncomfortable you fell down a few times you cut your knee but was it totally worth it to feel your wind feel your wind, feel your hair flying in the wind. Absolutely. It was right. So you just always need to accept that when you start doing something, the beginning might be a little uncomfortable, but if we're always comfortable, we're always in our comfort zone and our comfort zone is never going to allow us to grow exponentially. And that's what I teach my clients to do. That's what I teach my students to do. That's what I coach the women in my world to do. I want exponential growth, right? Your mind is the only thing that's limiting you ever. It's nothing else. Everything else is an excuse for you supporting the belief that you have. But I'm here to help you reprogram your mind for success, for abundance. I want you to have personal well-being and professional success. Like that's the golden ticket to life. So what that's the first journaling question in case you're coming in now i want you to ask yourself what belief is stopping me from taking action and then i want you to just allow yourself 
to flow through the answer. Just write it out and see what comes up for you. I promise you that if you go into it with the energy and mindset that I don't need to know the answer, I'm releasing control, but I know that deep down I do have the answer, it's going to come up for you. And give yourself some time and some space to do this. Don't be like, all right, I'm just gonna take 10 minutes to journal. Really feel what's coming up for you. See what's coming up for you. Allow yourself to really go through and journal through the experiences that are coming up from you for you because that's going to allow you to see and examine that root cause and that root belief and once we examine it once we identify it then we get to call it out shine a light on it and say hey buddy you've been messing up some stuff in my life and I realize that I'm the one that put you there but I now want to lovingly guide you in a new direction because when we lovingly guide our beliefs in a new direction we are actually reprogramming our mind and we are rewiring new pathways for our mirror neurons mirror neurons that are in our brain and I know that that sounds like a lot but it's really your brain is a supercomputer, right? So you don't have to always understand. I'm sure most of you watching do not really know what an operating system is. You probably don't know how to use it, but I know you know how to log in to your Instagram. I know you know how to post on Instagram. I know you know how to play some games or whatever it may be. So trust that someone else has learned all of that higher stuff, aka me, and I can just help you guide you through the process. So don't get hung up on these words and the big terminology. Just trust that you're always in the right place and you're always at the right time. So if you're hearing this message and you're hearing this, there's something valuable that you're going to gain from it. You don't always have to know consciously what it is, but your subconscious mind is truly your highest self and it's always trying to support you. So once you identify what the feeling is that you're feeling that's causing this self-sabotaging belief then i want you to journal out and this is the next journaling prompt what experience or experiences so experience or experiences in my life caused me to feel blank and insert whatever feeling that is and so again, it's what experiences in my life caused me to feel blank and you're going to insert that feeling. Now, again, allow this to just flow out of you. What we aren't really taught in society, especially if you're a male, to process your emotions and to speak with them comfortably, but realize there's no judgment here because it's just you, yourself, and I working on yourself so that way you can better your life. So don't judge yourself, just allow yourself to be honest because once you're honest with yourself, that's how you take accountability. And once you take accountability for your life, that's when you can make the transformations that are truly sustainable in life and in business because I'm always going to teach you if you really want the freedom, the impact, and the income that you desire, it's really going to align with having your own business. Now, there's nothing wrong if you don't want to have your own business. You can absolutely work in a nine to five. I was a public servant for eight years, so I get it. I understand it, but I'm just saying that's where the exponential growth can really come from. Either way, you'll definitely learn something from this. So again, when you're writing out what experiences in my life caused me to feel it could be unworthy it could feel it could be unloved it could be like i lack support in my life like i'm never understood any anything like that but those are typically going to be the root limiting beliefs that show up now now once we know where that subconscious belief is we get to create a different story and instead of focusing on a limited feeling that your perception of a situation created, we're going to look back at the experience on an opportunity for growth moving forward. So that means you're going to focus on the good that came from the situation. What did you learn from it? How did it empower you? How did it help you shift the course of your life? What is the best case scenario of that situation? 
So choose to, you know, they always say that hindsight is 2020. I want you to look back at these experiences and really come at it from that point of view. Hindsight is 2020. So now that my six year old self created this limited belief, my 32 year old self is going to say, I love you, I support you for feeling that way, and I honor you for feeling that way, inner child, that six-year-old self, but now I'm choosing to see this a different way so that I can move forward in my life and in my business, or in my life and in my career. So, let me give you an example in case you're like, this all sounds really great, Alexa, but I'm not exactly sure how to put all of the pieces together. So say that you're struggling to make money in your business. If you don't have a business, it could be in your career. Maybe you feel stagnant in the income you're getting paid, or maybe you're living paycheck to paycheck in your career, or maybe you don't even have a career, but money is you can just see it as money if you don't have your own business. So say you're struggling to make money and you don't feel worthy of having money because you don't feel worthy of having money. So you identified a time in your life when you really wanted to go on a school trip when you were younger, but your dad said no. And he said that it costs too much money. Money doesn't grow on trees. He went off on a tangent and you felt him get angry and then you started to feel fearful. Now this caused you to believe that you don't deserve to have your needs met. And it taught you that money is a cause of pain in your life, etc. You see how we're see how we're tying all of those pieces together? It was something that happened about something that you probably don't even remember anymore. You probably didn't realize that it made such an impact on your life. But now that we're allowing allowing our subconscious, it's giving you these memories that you could have repressed, and it's allowing you, since you're saying that you're trying to learn from them and release them and shift them it's giving them to you to really work through so don't judge yourself because as a 32 year old woman you might be like what does a school field trip have anything to do with my current business but realize that that's your ego talking so we're really always trying to send love to our ego say thank you for trying to keep me safe and then not allowing it to stop us from taking action because that self-sabotaging voice in your head is your ego and we don't want to listen to that okay it's understand that the ego has a completely different purpose than it was originally created for because we are not out living in the wilderness anymore we are living in the times of social media so now the way that you would rewire and dismantle this previous belief is really challenging all of the different parts of that story that you just told. So now the so when we look at what you what that belief created to us, one of those things was does money doesn't grow on trees. Well, does money grow on trees? Why yes. Yes it does. Money is printed on paper and paper comes from trees. So that part of the belief can't hold true. And so we've just dismantled one part of that belief that our six-year-old self held on to. And if you're just coming in the middle of this, then rewatch this because we are talking about self-sabotaging self beliefs in life and business. And I'm giving you five steps to really overcome them. And we've gone through some journaling prompts. So just rewatch this if you are hopping in now it'll make more sense um so that belief can't be true that money doesn't grow on trees now the other part was you don't deserve to have your needs met that was a belief that it was created from that experience well do you deserve to have your needs yet your needs met Fuck yes, you do. You are a goddamn divine goddess. God, you are divinity. You, Of course, you deserve to have your needs met. You deserve to live an incredible life. So that part can't hold up true either. Now, you deserve to have a magical, abundant life. All of this and business. Now, the other part was does, does or money causes you pain. Well, is that true that money always causes you pain? No, it definitely doesn't, right? I know that I feel like a queen when I get a manicure and pedicure and how am I able to do that through money? And you know, if you don't get your nails done, I'm sure you love going out to eat. 
And how are you able to do that? Money. So money doesn't always cause pain. <clears throat> so now we really just took a belief that our six-year-old self created when we were little that we didn't even realize was in our subconscious mind and really causing us to have self-sabotaging behavior and we just dismantled it. So when you dismantle it, that's when you open up space to create a new story, to reprogram in a new belief. So just because something happened in your past and you decided to create a false belief structure at that time, it doesn't mean that you have to continue to choose to subscribe to that to the, for the rest of your life. So then I want you to journal out uh, on how you would rather feel about this topic. So in terms of money, if we're going to stay on that money example, you could say my needs are always met when it comes to my finances. I have a magical and abundant life in business. I am always supported in my life in business. My products and services provide amazing transformations. I am handsomely paid for all of my services. You know, something like this, instead of having a limited point of view and a limited belief on money, which doesn't allow you to have the most abundant life lifestyle, we're going to choose to change it to an abundant belief, one that we would rather be in. You feel me? Like for real, how much better does a success building belief, that's what I teach them as success building beliefs, how much better does that feel than the self-sabotaging belief that was keeping you limited, that was keeping you stuck on that hamster wheel or waking up and feeling like it's Groundhog's Day all the time because you want your life to change and you feel like you're doing all the things, but somehow it's the same patterns that are repeating. It's because your subconscious brain really does rule 90% of your life. So if we are not going in and examining our beliefs on a conscious level and doing it from a subconscious level, then we're never going to be able to get to the root cause and the root cause will keep replaying and running the show. So once we examine it, then we get to change it. And then we just keep supporting this new belief. You can't just say it once and then woof, life has changed. Wouldn't that be gravy? But once you do acknowledge, then you can start seeing when these limiting beliefs around money come up and say, wait a minute. No, 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 no. What I tell myself is what ends up happening in my life. So what I'm going to tell myself is abundance is my natural state. My business makes money every single day. I get checks in the mail randomly. I have more money than I know what to do with. I get to donate to all of my favorite causes, whatever the case may be. But let's start telling ourselves really amazing stories. So that way we're getting really amazing results because that is truly how it works you're going to start vibrating at a higher frequency too when you start believing these beliefs and supporting them because how much more limitless does that feel than a limiting belief? I'm really always teaching that you have infinite potential and you have limitless possibilities. So let's stop limiting ourselves, right? Because you might have you might have had situations and beliefs and stories that made you feel limited in your past, but if you realize that you get to change them at any moment, why would you keep waiting unless you have self-sabotage? And that's why I'm teaching you this because my clients get a, a lot of value out of this and my students get a lot of value because a question I get asked a lot of the time is, Alexa, how do you keep showing up when no one's showing up? How do you keep creating when it looks like no one's buying? How do you have this belief structure that you do? How do you hold your vibration? How do you hold your frequency? How do you really sustain it? How do you take action when you're not quite sure? And it's really always going to start with your beliefs. Your beliefs create the actions that you take and the actions that you take create the identity that you wear. And we really want to look at all of these and work on all of these when we want sustainable transformation. Because if we only look at one, that's not sustainable, right? That's gonna be like the diet where we do it for a little bit of time and we see some results and then we stop doing it and then all the results go away. We don't want that. That's too much time. That's too much energy. Let's keep moving forward for growth. Let's be growth oriented. So you really elevate your frequency when you align with the results that you want in life. Now, it is super important when you're taking action to 
realize that you need to be in alignment. It's the alignment that is going to help you take action that feels like it flows with the universe instead of being resistant and causing frustration. You really want to create more action that's going to make you feel satisfied. And that's when you do it from alignment. And I know that you've always you've probably heard a lot of times anyway people say take aligned action but what that means is really getting into a high vibration a limitless potential about yourself deciding I may not love the life that I'm living now but I also am aware that I get to change it and I might have to do some unsexy work at first to identify why my life has been created this way why I created it why these programs are still running but I get to choose and I get to decide what limitless potential and stories I tell myself now and I'm going to decide it's going to be the most abundant story I could ever live I'm going to have the most expansive life that I could ever live when I look back at my life when I am 70 years old sitting on a rocking chair on a porch looking over at this beautiful property and probably watching children and animals run amok (laughs) I am going to say god damn Did I live a beautiful life? And am I so fucking grateful that I took the time to do a little bit of the unsexy work to build this life that's better than I could have ever imagined? And that's really where it comes from. It's the daily actions that you take. It's the daily habits that you do. It's the daily thoughts that you think, the words that you say. That's what creates that end result. So what I want you to always try and do is get into alignment, mind, body, soul alignment, then take action. So that way the the action feels good. It supports the lifestyle that you're trying to create. I see so many entrepreneurs, especially when they're new, wanting to have more freedom, wanting to have more income, wanting to have more impact in their life than their nine to five gave them. But then they are doing all of this administrative work or they're doing all of this work that they feel like they have to do because they've seen other people do it and it doesn't feel aligned to them, then it drains their energy. And then everything they do, they do it from a drained lack energy. So they're always getting lackluster results because it's truly the energy that you do something in is going to create the results that you get from it. And people don't realize this. And so that's why it's so important is to realize what your end result is, get clear on that, and then work backwards. And when you get clear on this, in order to get clear on what you want to bring into this life, it's going to make you rise your rise up. It's going to make you raise your vibration because you aren't going to want something that's aligned with where you're at because how is that any fun? How is that exciting? How is that really changing? It doesn't give you anything to look forward to. So if you know what your result is and it's up here, in order to really align with that, you align with that version of yourself that's there and then you start working backwards and say, well, if this is where I want to be and this is what I want to get, then I'm going to have to do these things to get it. And then it's going to feel like you're really working with the universe. You're really co-creating. And that's when you're going to take action that's aligned. So it's going to have better results. Now, another part of taking action that's super important is to realize that When you're taking the action, when you first start creating the thing, when you first start doing the thing, whatever it may be, if you are going into it with an energy of, I don't know if this is going to work or this kind of feels like it's going to waste my time, or if you're going into it with an energy of kind of like, meh, I don't really know. Instead of going into an energy with, this is going to fucking work. People are going to love what I am doing right now. This is going to cause major transformations. This is going to help my life shift in the fastest possible way. This is 100% what I need to do. If you're not 100% all in, all committed to that end result before you take that action, then it's likely not going to give you the results that you want because you didn't go into it with the energy of, knowing how this was going to go for you. And now that's not to say that you can see the future and you know exactly from A to Z what's going to happen. But that is saying that you're committed to this result and you're committed to taking action that aligns you with this result. And because you're committed to this result, because you're focused on this result, because you're focused on this result and because you're taking action to get you to this result, then of course, 
of course you will get the results. And that is your mindset, that's your energy, that's you aligning. And it takes a lot of personal development work to get there, but it starts with doing things like this, overcoming your self-sabotaging behavior, because that's something in your life or in your business that's always going to show up. We are humans, we have limiting beliefs, but it's about how can we acknowledge them, how can we change them, and how can we continue to support a lifestyle that's what we want to live instead of feeling Feeling like life is happening to us and feeling like we're stuck in a victim mentality because that's a lack mindset that's a lack energy that's a lack vibration and it's going to lower you and then you're not going to have success in your business you're not going to have well-being in your life it's going to cause you to feel like you're on this constant roller coaster and that might be fun sometimes but it's not going to be sustainable it's just really not now So the energy that you put into something is the energy that you will receive out of that thing. And that is truly the law of correspondence. So if you're familiar with the universal laws, that is one of them. What it's like a boomerang. So whatever beliefs you put into the thing you're doing, you're basically throwing that out in the universe once you're doing it and then those beliefs end up throwing back at you so if you do something and you believe it's going to be successful you're going to get success if you do something and you believe it's not going to be successful then it's not going to be successful you're deciding how things get to go for you and then life is aligning with your decisions that's really how it works So let me recap the five steps to overcoming self-sabotage in your life and business. And if you do have any questions about anything that I said, if you have any takeaways, if there's anything you want me to go over, elaborate on, anything at all, questions, comments, or concerns, type them in the chat box. If you are watching the replay, then go ahead and drop me a comment and I will get back to you. Or you can always DM me if that's more comfortable for you. And again, these are the type of things that I go over with my clients. It's really about how can we get, how can we train your mind? How can we get into your body? How can we know your soul? And how can we create an aligned biz? It's, it's really the pillars of my coaching, of my teaching, and what I really believe provides that long-term success and well-being because both are important, right? So five steps to overcoming self-sabotage in your life and biz. Number one, identifying these traits and beliefs inside of you. So number one is identifying the belief inside of you or the action or the trait. Now, number two is getting to the root cause. Getting to the root cause. Number three is rewiring in a new story. Number four is take taking aligned action. And number five is knowing that it will work out. So let me go through those one more time. Identifying the limiting belief, getting to the root cause, rewiring in a new story, taking aligned action, knowing that it will work. Now, if you are watching the replay, let me know if that was helpful for you. I really would love to know what your biggest takeaway has been so far. Mindset is the foundation of my business. It's really the foundation of everyone's life, whether you realize it or not. So if you're looking to go deeper in rewiring your mind for success, beliefs and there's really two ways right now to work with me of course valerie so so glad we could connect right now sending you lots of love so the first way to work with me is going to be in mind body soul biz school now this will help you get into mind body soul alignment and then create a biz from that place. It's really for the woman who is ready to align with her higher self and create the biz, create a biz beyond her wildest imagination. 
Biz School is open for pre-enrollment right now. So if you're looking to get early bird pricing, you will want to send me a message right now because you will be saving $1,111.1111. And that's kind of a big deal. So DM me if you're looking to reserve and get the early bird pricing. And because I love to spoil you with, we're going to get rid of him and then we'll block him later. Okay. So <laughs> this is why I coach women. Anyway. Um, so I love to spoil you with bonuses and I did want to do this training yesterday, but being a digital nomad right now, sometimes <laughs> we just got to go with the flow, right? So you are only going to get this today, which is Wednesday the third Thursday. It's Thursday. I never know what day of the week it is. Okay. That's one of the beautiful things about having your own business. You can forget what day of the week it is. So anyway, if you DM me today, because I'd love to spoil you with bonuses, you will get a free 60 minute human design reading with me if you sign up for mind body soul business school and you get in at the pre-enrollment prep price seriously what day is it i who, kn who knows who cares i have things on my phone that tell me when i'm doing things when they pop up i'm good <laughs> but day of the weekend eh, not so important so if you do do that, just to let you know, if you take advantage of the free human design reading, you're going to be getting the early bird pricing, which is $1,111 off. And then you'll also get a $300 savings for the human design reading with the caveat, of course, that you do need to know your time of birth, date of birth, and the location of your birth in order to get a human design reading. So the other way to work with me is Mind Body Soul Coaching, which is the Lux coaching container that provides you with all of the tools and support that you need for personal well-being and professional success. For the woman who wants to have a thriving life and to build an empire, and that can look however you want it to look, but you really want to have a limitless potential and you really want to have infinite possibilities in your life. This is for the woman who's really ready to go in on her life and make big changes. Like we are dropping the excuses. We are showing the fuck up for the woman we are meant to be. And we're doing the dirty, unsexy work to get us to the most sexy self that we can live. I call it the most magnetic self. And that's something that you will learn in either my container um, for coaching or biz school. Um, if you do want to join coaching, spots are very limited and I do that so I can provide the best possible experience and facilitate the biggest transformations with my client. So if you are looking to get in, hit me up now so that way you can reserve your spot for coaching. It is a three month container that you would be making an investment in yourself to commit to. So let me know if one of those are feeling right for you. And I really, really appreciate you all hanging out with me today whether you caught it live, whether you are watching the replay. This has been something that I know helped me when I was first starting out in personal development as, as well as my career when I first started my coaching business. So let me know. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you need the journal prompts. Again, I would be more than happy to send them in a DM. So you're magnificent. I love you. I'm so excited to talk more and have the most amazing day because you get to decide. You get to decide how your day goes for you.